the outdoors is not a particularly visibly diverse space. It's very dominated by this white, straight male image. I think the fact that I've got into things like doing climbing and activities that have this masculine vibe to them, maybe subconsciously part of the reason I've got into doing them is to help hide the other part of myself, the part of myself that's queer. Around the age of 18 or 19, I think I decided in my head that I didn't want to be gay, that I was going to repress that part of myself and go through the rest of my life pretending to be straight. To be that deeply uncomfortable and ashamed of a part of yourself, to the extent that you choose to repress it completely, is a pretty messed up and damaging thing to do. My experiences of society growing up had evidently led me to be ashamed of that part of myself or believe that I should be ashamed of that part of myself. Okay. <laughs> cool, good. Is this part of trying to get inside my head? Is this working? Come on in. I moved up here 15 years ago now to study at university. I didn't know much about Glasgow before I came here, but I quickly fell in love with the place. I kind of fell in with a really good bunch of mates there and felt really comfortable in their company and I kind of realised that they wouldn't change their opinion of me at all. So I came out in my second year at university. You build up in your head, even though most people won't care, you still build it up in your head as a big deal. When I arrived at university, I didn't really get out of the city very much. I played a lot of rugby. I had a quite serious rugby injury. It turned out to be a blessing in disguise because it meant that I rediscovered doing stuff in the outdoors. For me, a big part of the wanting to spend more time in the outdoors was actually trying to develop my own photography. The thought started to creep into my head that maybe this was something I could make a career out of. <laughs> when I'd moved into the outdoors world, I'd become much more guarded about my sexuality and about my personal life. For a while, I was certainly living two lives, and I was kind of keeping one life hidden away from people in the other life. It was kind of like being back in the closet again. I was in that mentally draining situation where I was hiding a part of myself again. That, that wasn't a fair thing to do to myself, but also it wasn't fair to the people that I spend time in the mountains with as well. And I didn't want to go on like that. 
how can you love others if you don't love yourself? Nice one. Okay, just watch it here, Jamie. Yeah. Over the last year or so, I've actually made more of an effort to tell people. Every time I've had that conversation with people, telling people, it's become easier and easier to have it every time. Oh, that was really good. <laughs> Don't ask me to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of much happier in myself. Maybe if one of the reasons why I was not so comfortable having this conversation with people is because there weren't so many visibly queer people in the, in the outdoors community. That if I can be that for someone else, then that's a really positive thing to do. And I guess I wanted to say to anyone who's young and growing up and coming to terms with their sexuality or perhaps anxious about it at all, the outdoors and climbing world <laughs> is a welcoming and accepting place where you can hold your head high and be proud of who you are. Don't try and be what you think other people want you to be. Just be yourself.